Are you looking to upload a large amount of unique data into Salesforce? In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through creating a custom Salesforce object, then using Mule, upload each record from a CSV file into Salesforce. This will allow you to quickly bulk upload large sets of data and transfer them into a custom object inside Salesforce. The first thing we need to do is create an object type inside Salesforce that's going to hold the data we upload to it. If you already don't have a Salesforce account, you can set up a developer account by going to developer.salesforce.com and hitting the sign up button. I've previously already done this so I can now go to login.salesforce.com with my username and my password. And it brings me to the home page of what Salesforce calls their lightning platform. From here we go to the object manager, which is a pinned tab for me on my screen. However, an alternate way to get to it is through the left sidebar under platform tools, expand object and fields, and click on object manager. These are 32 common object types. It is best to see if the data you're uploading to Salesforce first fits into one of these predefined objects. In my case, the data I'm uploading to Salesforce is unique, so I'll be creating a brand new custom object. To do so, I click on the Create button here, and I select Custom Object. This form has quite a lot of fields to fill out, however, most of them are not mandatory. A majority is just customization of how this object can be managed inside Salesforce. And you can always go back and modify these fields. So don't be afraid to enter a value if you're not sure what it does. The data type I need to create is called a usage. I'm just going to enter the mandatory fields for now. Now I have my usage object created. If I go into the Fields and Relationships tab, you can see that there's some default fields already pre-populated. This last usage record is my primary key, and it's a text. Let me go ahead and change that. That's not what I intended it to be. We're going to call it a Usage ID instead, and it's going to be a number. Now have an auto incrementing number as my primary key for each record entry. This object as is doesn't have any fields for me to enter my own custom data. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple new fields. The data type of the field is just going to be a text. And I'm going to name it count ID, the length 25, we'll say it's required, I'm not going to add any specific security, save and create a new one. One is for company ID, same length, required, and this last one's going to be a number. We're going to call this quantity. We'll make it whole numbers with up to five digits. Required. Next, save. And now we have our custom object usage set up inside Salesforce. By default, if we go into the app launcher, you can see under all items, our usage op custom object isn't there. We can add it by creating what they call a tab. So let's go to the setup homepage, create 
custom tab. Select our usage object. That color is fine. Next. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. Apple. Defaults are fine. Defaults are fine. There. Now if we go into the app launcher, you'll see now that we have a quick link that we can use to view all our usage data. And as, as you can see, if we select all usage data stored, you won't have, we have no items to display. And even if we did, we can see that the columns here is just the usage ID. Let's add on this table the custom fields that we just created. Perfect, that sets us up inside Salesforce. Now it's time to go into AnyPoint platform and send some data Salesforce way. Today we'll be using AnyPoint Studio version 7.1 and we'll be using the newest Mule runtime which is Mule 4.1.0 Enterprise Edition. The first step we're gonna do is make a connection to Salesforce. Inside any Mule configuration file, we'll just choose this one. We're going to go to Global Elements, click Create, and look for the Salesforce SFDC config. For here, we're going to enter the username and password that we used to when we created our Salesforce.com account. Our security token, which we got from inside our Salesforce account and we're going to use the authorization URL that they provide. Great, and our connection was successful. So in a first example, what we're going to do is load up a CSV file that has a bunch of usage records and using a batch job, we're going to send them one by one into Salesforce. Inside the Salesforce Create Connector, we're going to use our configuration that we just set up. And we're going to hit this refresh button, which is going to go to Salesforce through our connection, and it's going to pull all the object types that we have inside our account. And here's the populated list. And if you scroll down to usage, perfect. This was the one we created. So that's a really neat feature of the connector to be able to pre-populate this. So we don't have to make any mistakes trying to enter it ourselves. Let's move on to transforming our input CSV file to the Salesforce usage object. On the file input connector, we will be looking for new files inside the usage loader inbound folder, which I've created here on our left side structure. This transform message component will take the CSV file and create an iterator, which will get passed into the batch job. To help map the CSV file into the Salesforce payload, let's define the payload metadata. I have a sample file already created inside my project. As you can see, it picked up all four columns that are in there, as well as the header row, which specifies the name of each column. Great, our metadata has been read into DataSense. Just to show you a quick example of what the CSV file looks like, it's a comma delimited four columns account ID, which is a number, company ID, number, event code, which is the type of usage, and the quantity is just an integer. The tricky part here is in our output panel, we don't have the metadata for the usage object, so we can't really drag and drop fields to build the transformation. What I do to get around this is to go back into Salesforce and pull up our usage object definition. 
go to fields and relationships and here under the field name column you'll have specifies the keys that are needed for the key value pairs when creating the Salesforce object. So for account ID, let's copy this. We can use the autocomplete. And we leave behind event code because we did not create a matching field for it inside Salesforce as our business requirements don't need it. That handles the payload being sent to Salesforce. Lastly, inside the oncomplete phase of our batch job, we're creating a variable called end time. So in combination with the variable we created in this first transformation called start time, that once this batch job is complete, we can have a printout showing the period difference between the end time and start time so we could figure out how long the process took. Oh sorry, one thing I just realized is that I'm using the wrong Salesforce connector for this flow. If I go into the mule palette, type in Salesforce, you'll see that a lot of different actions to Salesforce is broken up into their own components. What I have is this one loaded, which adds one or more new records. What I really needed is to create a single which means that I'm only adding one new record for each call. So let me drag that in there. Now we can run our project. But I'm gonna do so a little bit different. Because with batch jobs, I have a tendency, if a previous one fails, to hold up any new ones. So I'm gonna run this with clearing the application data. So I'll apply, run. Server's now started. Now to trigger this flow, I'm gonna dro drop a file inside the inbound folder. Let's use this one that has two records into it. So let's take this, dump it into inbound and our file connector should pick it up. There's some activity in the logs, that's a good sign. What I'm looking for is the final logger statement that we have in our oncomplete phase. And there is total single uploading processing time. And this is a special data weave date type named period. And it tells you that the time between the starting of this process and the finishing was 3.23 seconds. The last thing to do now is go into Salesforce and verify that the data made it to there. Inside Salesforce, let's get out of the object manager. Let's go to usages. All usages. And bingo, we have two usage records that we uploaded successfully inside Salesforce. And there you have it. We were able to create a custom object inside Salesforce to map our usage data. And then from Mule, we created a flow which loaded a CSV file, processed it through a batch process, and sent each record individually into Salesforce. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for a part two video where I speed up this batch job by sending multiple records into Salesforce using a single call instead of the one call per record we showed in this video. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button. And if you're interested in more videos on MuleSeph technology and API development, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.